Alrighty, welcome, welcome, welcome everybody back to the Bible and coffee with me, Daniel. Oh, I thank you guys for tuning in again to another to another session, and we are going to be continuing on with where we left off at from last time okay uh, so we are going to be continuing on with Matthew chapter 4 starting at verse 12 and you are going to be part of episode number 5 alrighty guys so let's go ahead and start off with some prayer I thank you, dear Lord God, for this opportunity to be able to come and gather together with everybody today and to be able to listen to your word and to be able to hear what it is that you have to say this day, Father, according to your word and according to your truth. I thank you, Father, and I pray that the seed will be planted into everyone this, that is listening this day. And I pray that you will water this seed, Father, and make it grow, make it sprout, and just make it grow big, Father. Just I ask that by your Holy Spirit that you just speak through me, Father. Speak through me and let your voice be heard. We thank you, Father. We praise you. We worship you. And this is all about you. This is all about you. This is about us learning to have a relationship with you to learn about your son Jesus our Lord and Savior so we can be more like him we can be Christ like I thank you Father in Jesus beautiful name we pray Amen and amen. All right, guys. So let's get going. Let's get started here. So that way we're not making this like lasting forever. Okay. Because you know me. Once the spirit gets a hold of me, I can just keep going. All right. So we're going to be looking at the part. And again, I'm reading through the New Living Translation of the Bible. Okay. And we will continue reading through the New Living Translation of the Bible. So that will not change unless if I tell you it is, but it is, I will continue reading out of the New Living Translation. All right, so here we're going to be looking at where Jesus' ministry begins. Okay, so this is the beginning of his ministry. All right, so the last time we saw, he was taken up into the mountains and everything, and out into the desert by the Holy Spirit. And he was tempted by the devil and everything. He fasted for 40 days, 40 nights, didn't have anything to eat or drink. Okay, and uh, Satan saw an opportune time, so he thought, to be able to get a hold of Jesus and to entice him, to, to serve him, to worship him. Huh. But little be known that uh, he lost. And Jesus won, of course. All right, so that's that's where we ended up off at. And I know there was a great message that came through. Um, if you didn't hear that one by chance, go back and listen to it. Okay, that was chapter 4, the beginning of chapter 4, 1 through 11. Okay, uh, there was a beautiful message that came out through there. Um and everything. So today we're going to be starting at Matthew chapter 4 verse 12 and we will finish off this chapter uh, prayerfully. Yeah, we should finish it off. Alright, so here we go. At the beginning of Jesus' ministry. Alright, so when Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he left Judea and returned to Galilee. Okay, now John had been arrested by... Uh, uh, the king because of the fact that he was scared of John but he also adored him or you know looked up to him because he believed he was a prophet of God and he loved his teachings but the thing is is that he was also 
speaking against the king and his marriage, which we'll hear later on in the uh, in the scriptures. Okay, um, verse thirteen. He went first to Nazareth, then left there and moved to Capernaum, beside the Sea of Galilee, in the region of Zebulun and Naphtali. This fulfilled what God said through the prophet Isaiah. In verse 15, in the land of Zebulun and of Naphtali, beside the sea, beyond the Jordan River, in Galilee, where so many Gentiles, where so many Gentiles live, the people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. And for those who lived in the land where death cast its shadow, a light has shined. Okay, and that is taken from that is going to be taken from Isaiah 9 1 through 2 okay so it's talking here about the fact that okay this area where they've just seen darkness where they've been sitting in darkness you know, and they've been sinning, they haven't, you know, been right with God or anything like that. And the light that it's talking about, the great light it's talking about is Jesus Christ. Okay, so that's what that scripture verse is saying. And this is a prophetic uh, saying from Isaiah about Jesus himself. Okay, so verse 17, from then on, Jesus began to preach, repent of your sins and turn to God. For the kingdom of heaven is near. Now you notice John the Baptist was preaching the same thing. John the Baptist was telling people the same thing. In verse uh, chapter 3 verse 2. It says, repent of your sins and turn to God. For the kingdom of heaven is near. Okay, so that's what G uh, uh, John the Baptist was preaching. And Jesus is preaching the same thing. Of course he is. He's, he's God in the flesh. He's, he wants us to repent of our sins and to seek God and to worship God and to have a relationship with God our Father. Okay, And that's what it is that we're supposed to be having is a relationship with Him. It's not about religion. It's about that relationship. Okay? Just like how you have a relationship with your spouse or your kids or your family. Okay, It's a relationship. Okay, so Jesus was preaching the same thing. Repent of your sins and turn to God, for the kingdom of heaven is near. All right, verse 18. We're going to be looking at his first disciples. One day, as Jesus was walking along the shore of the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, also called Peter, and Andrew, throwing a net into the water, for they fished for a living. Okay, so... They were, these guys were fishermen. If you guys don't have your coffee, make sure you grab your cup of coffee. Okay? Because this is, what is this called? The Bible and coffee with Daniel. So have your coffee as we're going through the word. I am. All right. So, the you know, uh, Everybody had their specific jobs, okay, as we're going to see as he's calling his disciples, okay, uh, Simon, who is also called Peter, and Andrew, they were fishermen, okay, verse 19, Jesus called out to them, come, follow me, and I will show you how to fish for people, talking about, you know, fishing for them, but in a sense to, to bring them to the kingdom of God, being, basically being evangelist. Okay, going out and spreading the word of God. That's what Jesus is going to teach them how to do. And how to bring healing to them. How to heal them through the power of God. Okay, And they left their nets at once and followed him. They had no question or anything like that. Jesus spoke. They followed. Okay. Verse 21. A, li a little farther up the shore... He saw two other brothers, James 
and John sitting in a boat with their father Zebedee repairing their nets. Again, some more fishermen. And he called to them too. They immediately followed him, leaving the boat and their father behind. Now you notice they were with the father. It's just, see, the other guys, this was their business. This is what they did for a living. They sold, they, they went fishing, they sold fish, okay, to the marketplaces to make money. And plus they also kept fish for themselves because they had to eat, okay. So the first two, Peter and Andrew, or Simon, Simon, which was called Peter later, and Andrew, they were fishermen. They were on their own boat. Um, and then these two, they were fishing with their father, working with their father. And Jesus told them, hey, come with me. And they came, James and John. Okay, they didn't, they didn't question. They didn't say nothing. Or according to the Bible, you know, there's nothing written here that says that they said anything. But, you know, they just dropped everything and followed him. They left the boat and their father behind. Just think, leaving everything behind to follow a man that they barely even know and to just leave the worldly stuff behind to follow him just because he says, come, follow me. They must have saw something in him. Because Jesus hadn't even started his ministry yet. This is the beginning of his ministry. Okay? Remember, this is the beginning of his ministry. He's walking along by himself. And, he's, and he comes across these people. And just says, come, follow me. Come, follow me. The faith that it takes. People nowadays don't even want to give their life to God because they're so scared of leaving the stuff in the world. Everything that they've worked for. Oh, well, if I follow God, I can't have fun anymore. If I follow God, you know, it's like whatever, you know, they're scared. Oh, people are going to make fun of me, especially nowadays. Nowadays, with everything going on and people hating God and, you know, preaching against God and everything. And, you know, well, it's always been around, but, you know, being called a Jesus freak, a holy roller or whatever, you know. You know what? I'm proud of it. I Call me a holy roller. Call me a Jesus freak. Yeah, I am. I am. I love my God. I love my Jesus. I love my Holy Spirit. You know, they, they saved me. Okay, so, excuse me. I was trying to turn down the radio, but, or the music, but for some reason it kept going up. Um, they saved me from, from death, from from being the worst person that I could possibly be from they saved me from Satan's grip. Yeah, Satan keeps he keeps coming and trying to take me back. He keeps doing whatever he possibly can to try to get me to go back. But you know what? You know, yeah, we stumble, we fall. I'm not perfect. I I you know, I'll tell you this all the time. I am not perfect. I am. I'm not. I'm not perfect. You know, I struggle, I fight, you know, I still, I'll get, I get in the flesh, you know, but we all do, but we know that we have God there as we saw in the scriptures that we have the scriptures and we, that's why we need to dig into the scriptures and we got to learn and, and read and study the scriptures to see what they say to help us to live the life that we're supposed to live. The scriptures teach us about every single aspect of our life, about friendship, about marriage, relationships, you know, um, finances, health, eat, uh, eating properly, 
everything. Everything. You know, everything is in there. You look it up about love, about hate, about anger. It talks, it talks to us and teaches us about our emotions. You know, it talks to us a lot about different things. This is God's word. Yes, there's some questions. I ain't going to lie. There are some questions because of the fact that, you know, the Bible was put together by man. You know, when it was put together, you know, there was these people, these religious people. And I want to say, if I remember correctly, it was the Roman Catholics that got together and said, okay, well, these books are okay to put in there. This books is okay to put in there. This one we don't want to put in there, you know, and all this stuff or else this would be a bigger book than what it is. And then the translations, you know, we're not sure of what, you know, unless if you're a Hebrew scholar and you know how to read in the Hebrew, then you get the Bible in the original Hebrew and Greek and Aramaic, and you can read all those different languages and know exactly what's being read, then, you know, yeah, you're gonna, you know, you'll, you'll see. But with the, trans, with, the, with the translations, nothing's ever the same either. You know, just going from Spanish to English, or from English to Spanish, I mean, the words are just so different. You know, it's, it's it changes the meaning of things. So the same thing is going to be with, you know, going from Greek, Hebrew, and Aramaic to try to uh, change the translation into English to make it easier for us to understand. You know, and then you have all these different translations that, I want to say water it down okay I know that makes it easier but there are some translations just kind of water things out well, there's so many translations out there but the ones that I've come to find out that I really like I do like the new King James version I like the King James I also like um, the passion translation uh, which I'm getting to know that one and then also the New Living Translation, especially the one that we're reading out of. You know, but the thing is, is that this is God's word and people are scared of it. And if people are scared of it, there's a reason why people are scared of it, because there's power. There's power in the word. I don't know where I was going with this, but. Oh, it's because people, you know, like I, like I was saying, you know, these people just dropped everything and followed them. People nowadays don't even want to follow him because they're worried about what people are going to think. Just like I was saying, you know, but we can't worry about what people are going to think. We can't. We need, you know, and like I said, it's not about a religion. It's not about the religion. It's about the relationship. It is about the relationship. And that's how we need to look at it. And not as a religion, as a Christian sect, but as a relationship. Being Christ-like, helping those who are in need, healing, bringing healing to them, you know, praying for people, talking to people about them. That way he, you know, that way they can learn to have that relationship with him also. And that's what it's all about. It's not about putting down other religions or anything like that. It's about teaching people about the relationship. Because this is what it's about. It's about a relationship. Just like any relationship, there's things you need to do in order to have a healthy relationship. Things you can do, things you can't do, things, you know, that's going to make it work. Okay? So, uh, let's get back into this before it gets too late. It's already going on 20 minutes here. All right, verse 23. Crowds follow Jesus. Jesus traveled throughout the region of Galilee, teaching in the synagogues or the churches Okay, the temples and announcing the good news about the kingdom and he healed every kind of disease and illness news about him spread as far as Syria 
and people soon began bringing him all who were sick and whatever their sickness or disease or if they were demon possessed or epileptic or paralyzed he healed them all and when we are walking in Christ walking and being Christ like we can do the same thing as we're going to notice as we get into the scriptures Jesus says that all these things that I have done you will do also but even greater things you shall do because I go to the Father and I send you the Comforter which is the Holy Spirit so we should be able to do all this stuff but we also have to have that faith and teach about faith because the Bible also says and we're going to see this that is by their faith. If you notice, and as we get into this, you're going to notice, and Jesus says, your faith has healed you. Your faith has healed you. He even tells people, go and sin no more, or else a greater thing shall come upon you. So it has to do with, with our faith and our sins. Because some sicknesses can come across or come along from our sins okay as we're going to see all right so all the sickness all people who are sick disease demon possessed epileptic paralyzed whatever they were all healed by jesus verse 25 large crowds followed him wherever he went people from galilee the ten towns Jerusalem, from all over Judea, and from east of the Jordan River. Now, all these people followed him because they were amazed by his teachings. They were amazed by the miracles that were happening. They were saying, this is a great prophet, not realizing that this was the Son of God. They were thinking, man, this is just a great prophet. He's healing the sick, you know, casting out demons. We're going to see how it all becomes a conflict at, at some points and everything, you know, with the religious sect and which we find nowadays, too. We're going to see all this. We're just getting into the, the, the heart of the scriptures. Okay. And like I said, we're going to go through all the book of Matthew. And then we're going to go through uh, Matthew, Mark. And we're going to go Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The four Gospels. We're going to go in order. And then, afterwards, we're going to do something a little bit different. Okay, I don't know how long this is going to take us. That's why I want to try to do, you know, a couple of uh, these episodes a, a, a week. If I can do more, I'll do more. And then afterwards, what I want to do is go through it chronologically. Go through the Gospels, but go in chronological order of how all the events happen so we can get a bigger uh, grasp of everything. Everything will be put together and we'll see, instead of trying to jump around through scriptures and, and talk about it, everything, we're going to see how everything, you know, comes to get, comes together. Also, there's a couple of other things that I want to start doing, and I'll bring those out as um, as they come. But in the beginning of the year, there's a couple of things I do want to add on to what we're doing. Um, so stay tuned for that. Um, I will. I won't break the surprise yet because I want to make sure I'm going to do it before I say I'm going to do it. Uh, right now, I want to get through this what we're doing now because it took me forever to actually get into doing this okay uh either it wasn't the right time or i don't know what the situation was i just i me personally i believe i just never got to it i never did it i didn't know how i wanted to do it but now i'm starting this even though it's close to the end of the year but we're doing this and we're we're doing it we're doing it so stay tuned continue staying tuned and listen and share everything that we're that we're going through okay just stay tuned and just learn. Just just receive everything that you know that is being put out to us. Especially when the spirit just takes a hold and just starts speaking and you know, giving us what it is that we need 
we need to have. All right, guys. Well, guys and gals. When I say guys, I'm not just saying guys. I mean guys and gals. So, you know, don't take offense or anything like that. That oh, I'm just talking to the guys. No, I'm talking to everybody. Guys, as in general. Okay. All right. So, until next time. I hope you enjoyed episode five, and we just finished off. Like I said, chapter four. So. Share this, pass it on to others, to your friends and family. That way they can listen in and, and they can get, you know, get fed with, with the word. All right, guys. Thank you for tuning in. Take care. And God bless you all.